And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. Hey everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and I have the Ameritron RCS8V Relay Box. Basically, it's a remote coax switch. That's what the RCS model is for. Uh, you know, a lot of people have radios that are multi-mode, multi-band. Let's say, for instance, the uh, uh, FT100D or the TS2000 or FT991. And they say, well, I, don't, I have my coax going to my HF wire, but, you know, I don't have a VHF antenna up there. And I need more coax to run several other antennas. This makes it a lot easier because you have this head unit here in the shack and it gives you five coax outputs that you mount remotely. You mount this relay box remotely, it comes with the hardware in here and basically with this bracket right here you mount this on a mast or a tower or whatever and then you run your input from your radio to here and now you have five different types of of uh, antennas you can hook up. They do make a model with all end connectors. I chose SO239 because that's what all my stuff is. So now I can have, say, a TS2000 input, and I can have an HF vertical, an HF dipole, I could have an HF delta loop, um, a VHF UHF dual band, and a two, a two meter Yagi. I can do all five of those right here, and, and I won't have to run. 500 feet of coax out the window. If I got a 100 foot run, I don't have to run five coax and, and manipulate the switch in the shack. I mount this outside, maybe I run a 10 foot piece that way, a 10 foot piece this way, and everything is switched outside. You got one cable leaving the shack. Uh, so that makes it really convenient. And on the box here, it shows you with the LED indicator which one you're on. And you can label up here. You can maybe make little stickers and put uh, uh, V for vertical, W for wire, you know, Y for Yagi. Uh, label them or you can write on there or whatever you want to do but um, and this this unit requires power this sends the power over the uh, screw cables uh, screw terminals here to the box and the thing is okay the power here's the power adapter 13.8 volt 500 milliamp okay and it doesn't come with a cable you supply the cable which is no big deal you can use phone wire as you're gonna see in the video I'm using cat5 it's not really that current dependent. It's only using a small signal. I use a piece of Cat5. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can use rotor cable. You can use regular phone cable, untwisted phone cable, speaker wire, whatever you want to use um, to go up there to the tower. So if you're having a 40-foot run, you get yourself a 50-foot piece of Cat5. You don't need a whole box and uh, run it up there. So you'll basically go one, two, three, four, five, and then the ground. And we'll show you inside this box here in two seconds uh, what it looks like, and then we'll, I'll wire it up real quick, and I'll show you it, you know in action with the uh, relays moving. So uh, this unit will handle 4,000 watts HF 160 through 10 meters. It'll handle 1,000 watts PEP on from 30 megahertz to 150 on VHF. Uh, UHF, it will work. It is a little compromising on SWR, it says. So you expect a little bit of a loss on UHF or a higher SWR for, for loss, but it'll still work. I just wouldn't run high power on UHF through this. Uh, VHF down is fine for high power. So let's take this thing apart and see what's in it. All right, so you take the four screws out in the corners, and the plate moves right out. Okay, and let's look at this thing. Look at that. Nice, solid, thick PCB board covered in some nice shiny solder. Heavy duty relays. These are really heavy duty relays. Um, big solder joints there, so it will handle quite a bit of power looking at that and the way they got that on there. Um, so basically, this is what you'll do is you'll run the piece of wire through this grommet and you'll go to these screw terminals and uh, they're labeled on the board one two three four five and ground so um, you'll wire it to the head unit you'll wire it to here let's go ahead and uh, get the cat5 on here alright so here's a quick pointer and, and if you're using cat5 or phone cable <clears throat> cat5 will have enough pairs in it I wouldn't really spend the money on cat6 
uh, the, the the twists are for the data. Um, this is data cable, so the twists are not going to really mean uh, do anything for you. Um, if anything, if you wanted to get shielded Cat Five, if you can find that at a decent price, you can do that just to keep away from some of the the uh, maybe RF or whatever. But it it shouldn't matter. You can use just regular untwisted phone cable or anything. Uh, but what I'll show you here is real quick. If you're using Cat Five, okay, to strip this stuff and make it successful. A lot of people, a lot of people have trouble with this. These shears are dull. But uh, basically, I what I do is I run it around. Pull the jacket off, okay? Pull the string. The string, because now you scored all this here. So you pull the string, get you some fresh part out there. Alright? Cut that off. Cut that off. Alright, and now you have the wires here with no, no nicks on them from you cutting them. Alright, so, uh, Let's go ahead and wire this up and uh, see how it works. Alright, so I wired it just for this video with a little short piece here, okay? And I just went uh, number to number, color to color. One, two, three, four, five, ground. One, two, three, four, five, ground. I twisted the browns together for the uh, ground. You don't have to, but I did. Um, and, uh, you know, I went white, blue, blue, white, orange, orange green and both the browns. Um, I also tied a knot in here so that if you pull on the cable it doesn't come through. See, slack is your friend. You want to have plenty of slack here when you do this. And that way uh, you got you know plenty of strength there. You, you could actually even go through this uh, little grommet here which I didn't do. But when I turn this on, alright, um, the lights here coordinate with what port you're on. When you hear the relays moving, okay, number one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so I would recommend that when you put this back in the box and you got it all up there, uh, I would recommend a little bit of clear silicone right in this hole. Something that comes out easily. Don't don't put nothing permanent in there. That way, if you ever have to replace this cable, but uh, you know a little bit of clear silicone won't hurt there. Or you can put it in on on the back there and just cover that up. That way, it's uh, good for many years to come out in the weather. If you're using Cat5, this is Cat5e uh, indoor outdoor. So you want to make sure you're using telephone cable that's with, that will withstand indoor outdoor because like here in Florida the weather is a killer it'll eat this cable up in a few years so if you want this out there for a while make sure you use good UV rated indoor outdoor cable to protect from the uh, the sun and, and moisture and all that so there you have it the RCS8V remote coax switch from Ameritron the manual is on the Ameritron website you can pick this up at gigaparts.com and uh, Check out my other videos, like us on Facebook, and uh, when I get all this set up, I'll show you another video when I get all my things going of uh, what I have. I got the uh, all kinds of stuff to put out yet, just haven't had the time. So thanks for watching, 7-3 from Ham Radio Concepts and KJ4YZI. This has been another exciting amateur radio video presented by Ham Radio Concepts. Subscribe today on YouTube. Search Ham Radio Concepts, all one word.